Here's another super secret button on Mercedes. Uh, here's the trunk release under here. There's no, you can, on mine there, you push the keyhole that's like right here, but this, squeeze that. And it's a pretty, pretty decent tri size trunk. Imagine that's the jack or something. Oh, there's your fuse box. Fuse box back there. A little cargo net hanger. Um, license plate holder. Uh, what is this? First aid kit. There you go. Yeah, first aid kit there. And some kind of wire thing. Hope that's not something you need. Oh, there's two of them. I don't know why there's two of these wire things. Not quite. They look like brake sensors or something. I don't know why they're back here. Right. There's the spare tire compartment. All your rugs and stuff back here. And it's a... It's not a full size. It's a full diameter, but it's not a full size spare. So that's pretty much it for the trunk. A little recess there to close the trunk if you're a, a um, vertically challenged person. Dual exhaust pipes, very cool. It is a formatic, meaning it's an all-wheel drive. Gas. Tethered cap. I noticed that um, I'm surprised they don't have a capless gas filler uh, compartment. I know some vehicles do have it. One cool thing I do, I, I, I think this one doesn't, mine does it, but you hold the, the unlock button and you hold it down and I and all the, well just watch. Just hold it down. Oop. And all the windows and the sunroof opens up. So uh, on a hot day, you can vent out the vehicle in a hurry. And also, if all your windows are down and it starts to drizzle or something, what you do is you hold this, the, the lock button down, and it closes everything for you. It's supposed to close all the windows for you. There we go. <laughs> The other difference between my car and this car, obviously they're about 10 years older, uh, 10 years difference, is the, the seat controls are, for this one, are here. Uh, you can, it, it, you know, it models the seat, so to lift the front of the seat up, you push that button, and bring the front down, you push that button there, bring the back up, and then down, you get the point. But mine were on the door, and it was very frustrating because you want to change the seat and you kind of revert to to the buttons here in, in like most American cars, but it was on the door. So that's one major difference there. I noticed there's a lever here in the passenger seat, so there's also one um, on the driver's seat, and this is the lumbar support. So the more you push it down, there's a there's something that comes out I don't know if you can see it yeah it's kind of hard to see but there's something that pushes um, a pad or something out in your lumbar region give you a little more lumbar support so your back doesn't uh, doesn't hurt driving long distances see the instrument cluster light up when I turn the car on there you go there's your fuel on the left, uh, temperature gauge on the right, there's your onboard computer which you can change the, the speedometer. It's a uh, centerless needle, <laughs> so it just kind of rides around the outside there. And then of course tachometer. It's pretty sporty, it's got uh, dark and silver, with silver trim. 
Uh, oh, I did notice, it's kind of interesting, the bottom of the steering wheel is flat. It's not round, you know, it's, it's round everywhere else, but down here it's flat, so I guess that gives you kind of a positive grab on it, or um, you, you can feel where the steering wheel is if you're going to make a turn. A little tactile uh, difference there. There's a little ding. Uh, here's the emergency brake there, and then brake release, that's very similar to my car. Let's, uh, let's see, what is this? Oh, there's a trunk. The trunk release is down here. Didn't notice that. A little visor. Uh, this light comes on. Back up the camera. This light comes on when you, when you open the thing so you can see me. Uh, I guess you can clip like your insurance information or something there. It's kind of kind of handy. There is no backup camera, so you can see there is. Uh, I'm in reverse. See that? And there's no backup camera, so. This is not a regular feature of the backup camera, or of the vehicle. Okay, let's do a driving part of this review. Um, this car does have the little uh, delay. Like if I want to change lanes, I just hit it and it, it keeps flashing for a couple of seconds. Um, from the miles per gallon there, I've driven eight miles so far and it's saying I got 18 and a half miles per gallon, which is excellent. Of course, it's a V6 compared to mine. At this point in my drive in the morning, I think I'm at like 15 miles per gallon, of course, with my big V8. Uh, and I'm going, uh, let's see, take it up to 60. All right, at 60, uh, I'm about 15, 1600 RPM. So that's, well, let me take it up a little bit. Uh, yep, 1700 RPM. So it, it runs a, a little lower RPM, so that's probably how it can save a little more fuel, uh, along with <coughs> turning, the, <laughs> turning the engine off when, when, the, uh, when the car comes to a complete stop. Of course, rainy morning. I think give you a, a view of the visibility in the car. You can pan around. Keep an eye on that traffic there. there. So it's got pretty decent visibility all around. Um, the change in this car from my car with the turn signal is the turn signal is up here versus down low with my uh, like with my car and the um, cruise control is down here versus up here. <clears throat> uh, took a little <laughs> took a little bit of getting used to, but not much. Um, I can pretty much do it without looking at it. Uh, just kind of uh, do it by feel. <clears throat> but it's just like me switching from my car to my wife's car. Uh, some some of the features are a little different, but nothing nothing uh, out of the <clears throat> unusual. And make a quick lane change here. <clears throat> Other than that, it's got some pep. Yeah, definitely got some pep. So hopefully, I can do a little bit of a. Uh, acceleration test uh, in a little bit here. Okay, I'm gonna hyper mile, see what kind of mileage I get. It's 22.2 right now, and I'm gonna coast down this hill, see what it looks like at the bottom. Okay, I'm almost down at the bottom of the hill, and I'm at 24.3 miles per gallon. So, Picked up two miles per gallon, hyper miling down this hill here. All right, let's see uh, what the pickup is like in this car. All right, 
I'm clear on the left, just waiting for clearing on the right. And here we go. Not too shabby. All right, let's do a little uh, straight on acceleration here. <clears throat> Zero to 40. Not too bad. Got some pep. Well, 18 miles, 24 miles per gallon. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm, not, I'm sure I could have squeezed in a few more. Maybe another couple miles per gallon, but... For a V6, little peppy, sporty car. Uh, it's not bad for mixed city highway driving. This thing does have a GPS in it. I call it navigation. And the way you access it is uh, this button here. So you can hit radio. And it changes to the radio. And then you hit uh, navi. And it changes to display the navigation. And then what you do is you work the navigation with this knob here. So let's say I want uh, I want to put in a, a destination. So I'll toggle over and then let's see point of interest, enter address, point of interest, select map. So it's just like a, a Garmin route planning. <clears throat> so you can enter an address. There's different addresses here you can enter. Um, let's see. So um, the way you enter it is you hit the, you, you, you push this button down. And um, it's got letters and numbers and stuff like that. So you just toggle through, pick what letter you want to spell out what you need and um, it'll auto, auto or auto complete for you or if it, it is, isn't in there um, you know I just can't find it but anyway that's that's the the crux of it um, here's the dealership I went to oops back um, so uh, let's see Anyway, you hit start guidance once you plugged in where you want. The route has been calculated. <laughs> it talks to you. And you can zoom in and out. Estimated time of arrival is 8.40 a.m. Yeah, so um, you can hit the button, my route, um, show route. Yeah. So, anyway, there's other options and stuff that I won't go into, but pretty cool. All so that's it. That's a look at the uh, Mercedes C Class 300 Formatic. Pretty cool. I'm guessing they run around 25. $30,000 for a 4 model. I'll put the price in the description below if you're even remotely interested in purchasing one. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't turn it down. Thanks for watching. See you later.